Are you like a superhero? I'm a daredevil. <laughs> Before the episode begins proper, we're reminded of this exchange. I'm not gonna be a superhero. What else are you gonna do as a Hulk? Followed by a montage of She-Hulk fucking around. Work, 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 let's work, work, work. We're reminded of Jen's refusal to take responsibility for her power, as set up for character growth later in the episode. But at the same time, the show glorifies Jen's past horrible behavior. They want her to grow, but don't want to admit she was a shit person to begin with. They want to have their cake and eat it too. And as we'll see, there are all sorts of issues and complications regarding her growth in this episode. A superhero named Leapfrog goes to Jen for illegal aid after he was burned by his defective suit. Next thing I know, my inflammable suit with a 900 degree threshold is on fire. Oh, then why are you complaining? If the suit was intended to be inflammable, then I guess it did its job, right? He wants compensation from the suit's maker, Luke Jacobson, who happens to be Jen's tailor. Sensing a conflict of interest, Jen goes to Holloway to have the case assigned to someone else. Batilio is one of our biggest clients. It's very important that we keep the Batilios happy. Eugene is also very excited to have a Hulk on the case. They're willing to sign a conflict waiver. But I believe I would be ethically compromised in representing a client against Jacobson. You've handled a client who had to sign a conflict waiver before in a case, one would argue, is a lot more personal than this one. Both characters are being dum-dums. Jen is being stupid because she's admittedly more compromised going to court against her tailor as opposed to representing the mass murderer that tried to kill her cousin. Again, the show tries to dismiss Jen's shittiness with a joke. Holloway is being an idiot because, despite her selfish motivation, Jen has made it plain that she can't pursue this case without bias. The client may be unhappy that he can't work with She-Hulk, but won't he be more unhappy if he loses the case due to Jen's conflict of interest? And that's not even mentioning the potential legal issues. As a compromise, Holloway says, I suggest that you try to come to an agreement with Mr. Jacobson, so then a filing would not be necessary. But that doesn't solve the issue. She still has a conflict of interest. I mean, Jacobson is currently making Jen a dress for an upcoming gala. You think that won't affect her ability to come to an agreement? Jen goes to Jacobson and says if he takes some accountability for the malfunction, there won't have to be a lawsuit. Jacobson throws a childish tantrum, tears up Jen's dress, and tells her to fuck off forever. Being a child herself, Jen responds, Now I am gonna take you down. He faces her in court, represented by Matt Murdock. Jen has put forward a motion to get Jacobson's list of clients. Matt argues against this, given that his clients are superheroes, anonymity is paramount. May I remind you that the Sokovia courts have been repealed. Since when? As far as we know, they were being enforced as recently as WandaVision. What changed? The show has casually upended a major facet of the MCU's world building. An entire film was dedicated to the turmoil around the Accords, and another set of films were the result of its implementation. And now they've been swept away with a single throwaway line. They've done so because the Accords require superheroes to register and reveal their identities to the government. If that were the case, there'd be no reason to hide Jacobson's client list. Matt argues his point well, convincing the judge to deny Jen's motion. Mr. Patilio, what kind of fuel did you use in your boosters? Jet fuel. That's not what my instructions said. What? You surprised me to how shit you are. Oh, uh, thank you. Apparently, Jen didn't do the bare minimum of research, asking Leapfrog if he used the product as instructed. But you used jet fuel in your boosters because that's not what my instructions said. What? <laughs> no, I didn't. He's lying. Don't ask me how I know, I just know. Come on, man. Doesn't feel like you're taking the whole secret identity thing very seriously. Jacobson is absolved of liability, and the case is dismissed. Matt comes off as an intelligent lawyer, but is this because he's genuinely written as an exceptional lawyer? Or is it only in juxtaposition does he seem exceptional? Nearly every other lawyer in the show is borderline retarded. These accidental deaths were an unfortunate byproduct of an ambitious expansion plan. Did my client know lives would be endangered? That is debatable. It depends on your definition of knowing. I'd like to move for dismissal of all charges against my client. Runa is the daughter of an elfin diplomat on Asgard and now in New Asgard. She has diplomatic immunity. She may have diplomatic immunity in New Asgard, but we are not in 
New Asco. Donnie's performance is a fun and spooky experience, which is the sweet spot for magic, in my professional opinion. By comparison, someone who knows even the basics of law comes off as a genius. The reason Matt wins the case is due to Leapfrog and Jen's incompetence, rather than him doing anything particularly impressive. This is similar to how the writers elevate Jen by bringing low everyone around her. It's like their writing skills hit a low ceiling, so they have to scale down everyone's intelligence for smart characters to come off as such. I'll at least commend them for their effort. Afterwards, Matt buys Jen a drink and they hit it off. Uh, Luke Jacobson made a couple of new suits for me, so I owed him one. Doesn't really look like it. It's a low blow insulting a blind man's clothes. <laughs> I'm wearing pants, right? <laughs> Props to the actors. I feel genuine chemistry between them. The show, however, is so insecure in its ability to portray this, it directly tells the audience what they're meant to get from these interactions. We're all feeling this, right? It's not just me. This guy's really kind of doing it for me. A more confident show would have let the scene speak for itself. You know the expression, one for them, one for us? As someone who works for them full time, I really don't have any gas in the tank for anything else. No, you say that, but I... I think you're in a unique position to do some real good. Jen Walters can use the law to help people when society fails them. She Hulk can help people when the law fails them. There you can if you choose. Be the best of both worlds. Jen considers Matt's suggestion, which is interesting. This is similar, but not quite the same, as what Smart Hulk told Jen in the pilot. I'm not gonna be a superhero. What else are you gonna do as a Hulk? Uh, return to my career. It's not one or the other, Jen. We can live between what we want and what is. But we can't pretend, like we are two of the few people on Earth that can actually protect her. Hulk was referring to global threats, the sort of things the Avengers tackle. Matt is referring to street-level threats, petty crime and the like. This touches upon a point of confusion. Is being a vigilante legal? Big names like the Avengers have usually been permitted to operate as they deem fit. But it's been a different story for street-level heroes. What are you doing, Matt? You're a lawyer, you're supposed to be helping people. Yeah. In a mask. Do you know what they call that? A vigilante, someone who acts outside of the law. Has this changed? In this episode, Leapfrog has no qualms about publicly declaring himself a superhero, and no one tries to arrest him for it. And Matt doesn't allude to any issues of legality. He wants Jacobson's clients to remain anonymous to protect their loved ones, not because what they do is illegal. So I guess it's safe to say being a vigilante is a-okay? This is something I wish the show would clarify. Phase 4 has been particularly shit when it comes to world building. I mean, the show has yet to even mention the blip, which would have had a drastic impact on the US legal system. Moving past the question of legality, why does Jen consider Matt's advice when she dismissed Smart Hulks out of hand? Objectively, it's more important to combat planetary threats than street crime. Logically, if she was hesitant to be a hero, wouldn't the former be stronger encouragement than the latter? The stakes are much higher. Well, street crime is directly related to her career. As we saw in the pilot, Jen's career is the most important thing in her life. Becoming a street-level hero could directly benefit this, helping clients outside of the courtroom when she can no longer help them within. This motivation is backed up by Jen's consistently selfish behavior. Aside from using it as an excuse to shirk her responsibilities. It's not wrong that I am choosing to help people in the way that I've always wanted to. She hasn't been at all interested in helping people. If she actually cared, she could have been fighting crime this whole time. But she's chosen not to. It's because it's never been about helping others. It's about how becoming a superhero would benefit her personally. But you could be an Avenger. Do the Avengers offer health care? I don't know. Maternity leave, a pension, are they even paid? Later, Jen gets a call from Leapfrog. He's being attacked and needs her help. Inspired by Matt's advice, Jen shows up in the suit she got in episode 5. And it's incredibly underwhelming. Is that what all the hype was about? Looks like some generic gym clothes. She Hulk confronts Leapfrog's attacker, Daredevil. They get into a fight, during which Jen causes copious amounts of unnecessary property damage. Jesus, Jen. He's a ninja with a couple sticks. You can't stop him without destroying a whole parking garage? What if someone's in there? At one point, she flings a car at him, rather than just, you know, running after him. She's a Hulk. She's definitely faster than him. She's not only needlessly wrecked someone's car, but she could have easily killed him. Hulk has damaged property during battles in the past, but it was against foes like Abomination, a rampaging monster more powerful than himself. Also, at the time, Hulk didn't understand what lightning and thunder was, let alone the concept of collateral damage. Jen has no such excuse. 
She just doesn't care. You ever destroyed a parking lot before? Oh crap, I'll go leave a note. Jen uses her sonic clap to disorient Daredevil. She unmasks him, revealing Matt Murdock. Leaf Frog is the bad guy here. He kidnapped Luke Jacobson. Uh, why didn't you tell me that before we fought? Uh, why didn't you ask me before immediately trying to whoop my ass? Uh no, she's right. It would have taken two seconds to say he kidnapped someone. And that would have cut short this whole escapade. They go to Leapfrog's base, where he's forcing Jacobson to make him a new suit. Because despite being super rich, rich parents. he apparently can't just hire a different tailor. You can hear their heartbeats. Come on, that's a little far-fetched. Says the one who turns into a giant green indestructible lady. Given the insanity of the world she lives in, why does Jen find this far-fetched? They argue about whether to infiltrate stealthily or to simply barge in. Daredevil opts to sneak in and confronts a bunch of goons in a hallway. For some reason, they're using crossbows instead of guns, which is very considerate of them as it makes Daredevil's job a lot easier. He fights them off in what is evidently a homage to the famous hallway scene from his series. But unlike that fight, Daredevil just allows one of the goons to call for backup. Dude, why didn't you stop him? Because the scene needs more enemies so She-Hulk can make her grand entrance. When and where Jen knew to crash through the ceiling, no one knows. They confront Leapfrog, completely destroying the element of surprise. The reason Daredevil was smart to use stealth was because Leapfrog has a hostage. Jacobson could have been injured in the crossfire of a big fight, and Leapfrog might have threatened to hurt him to facilitate an escape. Regardless, Jen barges in recklessly because she's an idiot. And Daredevil goes along with this because... Well, I'm not sure why. It contradicts his methods in favor of a plan he stated himself was half-baked. Stealth's the way to go, okay? Trust me, I've done this a million times. Just remind me again how many times you've broken into a warehouse full of goons. Oh, just let me do my thing. Yeah, and I will do my thing. You don't have a thing. You don't ever do this. I guess their lucky leapfrog just lets them rescue Jacobson. Miss Walters, what are you doing? You're supposed to be helping me. You stupid idiot! Why would leapfrog call his lawyer to help him commit a crime? Why would he think she'd go along with this? Also, for a dude who recently got horribly injured, he's walking around just fine. I have third degree burns all over my legs. During the fight, Daredevil starts talking law. We could say this is an episode of Mania. Temporary insanity is murky, but it's not a bad strategy. I angle this more as a form of traumatic expression due to undiagnosed PTSD. So the devil ninja guy, he, he's a lawyer? Uh, I'm just a big fan of legal dramas. Because I guess he's willing to risk his secret identity to be funny. I made a funny! Leapfrog jumps out the window to escape and breaks his legs. After the police arrive, Jen talks to Jacobson. He's forgiven her and will make her dress for the gala. This plotline feels like a missed opportunity. Imagine if Leapfrog wasn't a villain, and his suit had actually malfunctioned through no fault of his own. Jen would be forced to navigate two conflicting desires. Her desire to maintain her relationship with Jacobson, and her desire to enforce justice. It would test Jen's moral character, and creatively utilize the show's unique concept. Yet we get no such luck, and the conflict is resolved without Jen having to make any tough choices. Jen and Daredevil talk some more. They go back to her place to bone. The next morning, he departs. In full costume. In broad daylight. This character was supposed to have common sense, right? It's weird, you guys are still here? Doesn't it feel like this episode should be over? Seriously, what is this scene? This episode already came to a very satisfying conclusion. Wait, we're doing the gala? That doesn't feel right. Is next episode the finale? Oh, just like a tacked on set piece near the end of the season? This is the big twist, isn't it? Shut up! The show thinks acknowledging basic story structures somehow equates to comedy. Connecting the A and B story? Nice. The fact that the writers think this is impressive is sad. At the gala, the Female Lawyer of the Year award is given to several people, including Jen and Mallory, two objectively terrible lawyers. <laughs> As Jen gives her acceptance speech, Intelligentsia takes control of the screen. Do you want to see who She-Hulk really is? This is the truth presented by Intelligentsia. She-Hulk does not deserve your attention. She does not deserve your praise. They display various bits of info extracted from Jen's phone. Her dating app matches, her screensaver of Cap's ass, her dating profile, her bank info, her texts with Josh, and various bills. I'm not sure how any of this is supposed to make people turn against She-Hulk, especially without any context. 
She does not deserve the power she stole from the Hulk. Oh my god, can she's somebody cut this off? She's a superhero, and she's a slut. This is followed by a sex tape secretly recorded by Josh. Jen gets so enraged, she punches and tears down the screen, causing much damage and mass panic. An interesting reaction from someone who's apparently more skilled at controlling her anger than the Hulk. What was Intelligentsia's plan? Obviously doxing Jen, calling her a slut, and leaking her sex tape, one made without her knowledge, isn't going to turn the public against her. If anything, this will embolden people against Intelligentsia. Therefore, Jen's freakout must be what they're after. But that would mean if Jen hadn't lashed out in anger, their plans would have been ruined. Jen has shown herself to be prone to lashing out. I mean, catcalling is enough to make her lose control. But they couldn't have known this. I guess they were willing to take that gamble. Jen spots some men in black recording her. Still taken by rage, she rushes after them, crashing through a wall to grab one. But before she can do anything, she's surrounded by law enforcement. She stands there, disheveled, hands up, snarling like a beast. I quite like this sequence's execution. A lot of elements come together to convey Jen's raw emotion. Claustrophobic close-ups mixed with the oppressive feeling of harsh lights and a blurring alarm help to convey Jen's building frustration and anxiety. And I like how the alarm morphs into a part of the music. As if the chaotic noise surrounding her has become the soundtrack of her life. For a show that's lacked an ounce of creativity thus far, I appreciate the efforts put into this sequence. Aspects of this scene seem to harken back to the Incredible Hulk. The shots of chaos and panic feel similar to a traditional Hulk out. And maybe it's just me, but the music here is reminiscent of Hulk's theme. This draws comparison between She-Hulk and that version of Hulk, the one viewed as a monster and a danger, helping to emphasize the impact of Jen's rage. This scene both visually and audibly alludes to how Smart Hulk's warning has come to pass. I don't think you've thought through how dangerous this level of power is. Do you know the damage you can cause? One mistake, one freak out is literally life or death. You can't be emotional. Just regular anger means death and destruction for everything and everyone around you. When people start seeing you as a monster, that never goes away. This episode might be the best so far, though that's not saying much. Daredevil was mostly treated with respect and dignity. He has his moments of inexplicable stupidity, but he didn't get the Wong treatment, that's for sure. Which is a nice change of pace. A male character that is generally competent and heroic. Why didn't Hulk get this respect? We get some development for Jen, though not quite in the way I hoped. She seems to be considering becoming a superhero, though only because she's learned it can directly benefit her. This isn't out of any real desire to help others, but out of selfishness. So I guess nothing's changed, really. Perhaps next episode we'll explore this further. We leave Jen in an interesting place, with her lashing out and suffering the ramifications. I've said this before, but maybe, just maybe, she'll finally be forced to deal with the consequences of her actions.